Mr. Greeny. So thank you. This is the pen portrait of Megan Hurley, prepared by her family. Present in the hearing room are Michael and Joanne Hurley, Megan's mum and dad, and Bradley, Megan's brother. Other bereaved families are also in the hearing room, offering their support, and other family and friends are watching remotely. Shane Smith, the family's lawyer, will read out the pen portrait, which is interspersed with photographs of Megan, which will be played at the appropriate time. I'm going to first ask Mr. Wilson to put the first <coughs> slide on the screen, and then I'll invite Shane to begin. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Megan Hurley was a beautiful 15-year-old girl from Halewood in Liverpool, where she lived all her life. We hope this collection of thoughts and memories from family, friends, and people who knew her can give you some insight into the life of our amazing girl. From Megan's mum and dad. Megan was born on the 21st of March, 2002. She was premature and weighed a tiny four pounds, three ounces. This was such an amazing day for our family. We were overwhelmed to welcome Megan. We now had a baby girl and a baby boy, our son Bradley, who was six when she was born. Our family was filled with joy. Megan was the first granddaughter on Mike's side and the second on Joanne's. We were one big happy family. Megan was such a pleasant baby from the day she was born. The only time you would hear her make a sound was when she wanted feeding. Although she was born tiny, she rapidly began to gain weight. Her next weigh-in, she was a whopping nine pounds, 11 ounces. She continued to grow and grow. From the age of six months, Megan and Joanne attended a weekly toddler group, along with other new mums and their babies. The ladies would comment how good and well-behaved Megan was. She would soon be christened at St. Nicholas Church in Halewood, the church associated with Bradley's school. Halewood, Church of England, and we began to attend a Tuesday club at the school, which was getting the children ready for their next step. Megan loved to go every week, and it was a great opportunity for her to meet her future teachers. At the age of three, Megan had her first day at nursery. At this stage of her life, Megan's tight, blonde curls were impossible to miss and complimented her beautiful blue eyes. People were forever commenting on her striking features and adorable smile. Being such a placid child, she never once complained about starting school and thus settled in really well. Though the class was split into two, she would go on to make friends with all of them by the time she got to reception. She kept in touch with these friends for the rest of her life. She settled into school just as well as she'd settled into everything. She loved to be there and would hate if she had to be off. She was a quiet girl who got on with her daily duties and her school reports were flawless each year. She was loved by many, students and teachers included. Megan achieved brilliant results in her SATs and went on to win prom queen at her end of year leaving celebration, where she dazzled in a beautiful dress that she chose herself in her favorite color, orange. By this time, it was time for Megan to begin secondary school a daunting task for many, but not for Megan. Once again, she settled in great. 
Halewood Academy welcomed her and many of her primary school friends on the first day of year seven. But she would go on to make a much wider group of friends. She got along great with all the new people she had met and would love and would have new stories about new people each day. Megan's kind, caring and friendly nature didn't just help her socialising with her friends, the teachers loved her too. Her parents' evening reports were always perfect and they would have so many compliments on her personality. One that always sticks in our minds is, if we had a school full of Megans, what a school we would have. She loved school and only broke her 100% attendance record in 2015 for a small operation on her eye. As she zoomed through education with top grades, it was eventually time for her to pick her GCSEs. She picked PE. She was super athletic. She loved to run and was always picked to compete for the school. She picked photography and was becoming a keen photographer and loved to experiment with her phone camera. Her teacher in this subject sang her praises, so much so that we eventually bought her her very own DSLR camera for Christmas in 2016. Lastly, she picked graphic design, perhaps to follow in her brother's footsteps. Joanne was lucky enough to be able to take Megan to school every day herself. Although on occasion she would ask to be dropped off at her friend's house so that she could walk with them. Megan was a very caring girl who found joy in helping others. And on many occasions she would break into her birthday money so that her friends could go to the cinema or lend them change for their school dinners. In school, she made two best friends, Hannah and Jasmine, whom she would love to have sleepovers with and invite round for catch-ups. Although she was quick to make friends and socialise, she wasn't soft. If you were to do wrong by her, she wouldn't give you a second chance easily. She was mature beyond her years from an early age, and though quiet, she was fully confident once you got speaking to her. She was well-spoken and had lovely manners. All of her honourable qualities are probably what led her to meet her first boyfriend in March 2017, aged only 15. Kieran Hindley was a lovely lad, the type any parent would wish for their daughter, and a perfect match for Megan. He was kind and caring like her, and still keeps in touch with us today. Megan suffered with prickly heat all of her life, and nothing we tried seemed to combat it. But eventually Megan did some research herself, and found that she should start taking cod liver oil daily. Kieran would always remind her to take it. Like everything, their relationship was so cruelly cut short. In August 2017, we were due to travel to Menorca, a place we loved and went to yearly. Megan was so excited for the trip as there were 20 of us traveling, including our family and close family friends. Darren and Leanne, with their children Lucy and Emma, along with Gay and Stee, with their children Abby and Charlie. Us three families had grown together and Megan viewed the other kids as cousins. Megan's two cousins, who she doted on, were also coming along. Holidays were something we, as a family, loved, and Megan loved them too. Early in life, we would go to our caravan in Nevin. Megan would run around the fields as free as a bird and often made new friends on our caravan sites. Megan would love trips to the beach to swim, play and go on the jet ski with her dad. 
She was a strong and confident swimmer who had passed all her swimming lessons at an early age and had no fear of adventure or adrenaline. Megan would often invite her friends along for our holidays and camping trips. Our last trip with Megan was in March 2017 when we took her to Amsterdam for her 15th birthday, a city she had longed to visit for ages after falling in love with history and taking an interest into the life of Anne Frank. A memory we will always cherish. Ironically, being so tiny at birth, Megan ended up being five foot nine by the time she was 15. She was tall, slim, and had long wavy hair. She looked much older than she was. She always dressed smart and loved to shop for new clothes and trainers, excited to gain the approval of her brothers and friends. But her most standout feature was her smile. Perfect teeth and huge infectious grin. Her dentist once said if everyone had teeth like her, he would be out of a job. Megan was very family orientated. She would drop whatever she was doing to come and socialize whenever we had visits from our friends or her aunties and uncles whom she loved. But mostly she adored and idolized all of her cousins, older and younger, particularly Berry, who was eight years her junior. They would love to meet up laughing and playing for hours, making videos on musically and getting to know each other more each day. Megan had a way with young children, so much so that I always told her she would be an amazing midwife, but Megan was always looking to help others and had spoke about training to become a physiotherapist. Another career option Megan considered was becoming a vet she loved animals dearly and loved to care for her cat, Jerry, and her rabbit, Fudge. But she would eventually go on to practice her photography skills on her adoring pets, taking stunning photos of them. Though her friends and cousins developed a strong bond, none was stronger than with her brother, Bradley. She idolised him as he did her. They had a six year age gap, but grew up to become the best of friends, loving the same TV shows, movies, music, and would chat for hours about all the things they related on. Bradley would always buy her the trendiest clothes and makeup, and they would often go shopping together. He even took Megan and her friends to Alton Towers on one occasion they got on so well. They shared love for concerts and for music is what led them to the Ariana Grande concert. Megan was a huge fan from an early age and was desperate for tickets when she heard about the UK tour. They were Megan's Christmas present in 2016. Megan loved her parents and would often tell them so. She would watch football and other TV shows with her dad and go on many walks and bike rides with her mum. She loved to chat with them and hug them. Even when she was out, she would always stay in touch by text. Megan's GCSEs, further education, career and life were so cruelly taken from her during the horrific attack at the arena. Her prom, her wedding, her first car and her own children. Megan was maturing into a beautiful young lady who was living her life to the fullest. She had a lust for life and loved to have fun. So many beautiful and blossoming relationships were cut short, so many milestones will be missed and so many questions are still unanswered. Megan was everything we wanted her to be and we're so proud of everything she had become and achieved in her short life. From Megan's Nan, Norma. Megan was my beautiful granddaughter. 
She was always with me if she wasn't with her parents or her brother Bradley. Megan was such a lovely person and we are all so proud of her. She was a quiet, kind-natured person. Megan and I loved to go on days out to town, local parks or Southport, among other places, as she loved to shop like most girls her age. Megan had a deep love for animals and would always take stunning photos of my dogs. She had such a cheerful outlook on life. I miss her so much, words can't express. Megan was not only my granddaughter, but she was my friend and my companion. That was all tragically and unnecessarily ended in the Manchester Arena attack when she was taken from us. As a family, we miss her every day. We have lots of wonderful memories of her, which no one can ever take away. She will always be in our hearts. I always called her my little star from the day she was born, and I would say, I love you to the moon and back. I love you always, Megan. Nan. From Megan's auntie, Paula. Where do I start? I have sat here going through all the memories I have of Megan. It's truly heartbreaking. My first memory of her was on the 21st of March, 2002, the day she was born. I got a phone call to say her mum, Joanne, had been taken to hospital for an emergency caesarean. Megan was premature, so was in the neonatal ward at Liverpool's Women's Hospital, where I had been working that day. I went up to the ward and asked a nurse I knew if I could see Megan. I was led to a side ward where she lay in an incubator with a tiny pink blanket over her. I was amazed at how tiny she was, lay there so fragile, but with her whole life ahead of her. I will always treasure that memory. Despite her uncertain start, with the love and support of her mum and dad, Megan grew into an adorable child. She had a very gentle, quiet nature that everyone was endeared by. As she grew, so did her caring ways. There was nothing but praise from anybody whose life she touched. When I had my own daughter later on in life, <coughs> I was concerned about her growing up without siblings, but Megan was so good to Phoebe. They would play for hours together despite the age gap of seven years. When I took Megan out with Phoebe, people always mistook them as sisters. They were so alike in looks and nature. They would play in the park and enjoy time together, just chatting and taking silly photos of each other. One of my favourite days was at Nosley Safari Park. Megan was a real animal lover and was so excited about going through the safari park in the car. She was thrilled when we drove through the lion enclosure, pointing out the ones that she had spotted to my daughter. They took photos and giggled with excitement. We then went to the fairground on site where Megan looked after Phoebe on all the little rides. They had a wonderful day. I'm so grateful for the times they had together. Megan's death has been devastating for my daughter. She was seven years old when I had to sit her down and explain that Megan was gone. That conversation will haunt us both forever. I'm sure everyone who contributes memories to this pen portrait of Megan will be sat there like me, tears flowing, whilst remembering one of the most beautiful, funny, kind-hearted girls you could ever wish to meet. My husband John and I are extremely proud to say Megan was our niece and a part of our life we will always remember with love and fondness. The sweetest soul who should have had the chance to blossom into the beautiful young woman she was going to be. We will miss her and remain broken-hearted forever. Good night, darling Megan.
from Meghan's uncle, Marcus. As, Me as Meghan's uncle, I was lucky enough to visit her and see her on the day she was born. She was still in the maternity hospital and in a separate ward for premature babies. Being born six weeks early, she was very lucky to survive and thrive through her early days, even having to have special knitted clothes because she was so tiny. She showed spirit and strength to grow. Being premature certainly didn't seem to slow her down as a baby. She was always trying to keep up with her older brother, Bradley. Growing up so fast and forever growing taller and taller, my memories of Megan will always be of her smiling and laughing, and when not doing that, probably giggling. I cannot even remember her being down or sad, and she always found a reason to smile or laugh at any occasion. Megan could also be described as having a quiet, caring side to her, caring for people as well as animals, loving animals from rabbits to horses, she followed in the family tradition of being a true animal lover. When not in school, she would also enjoy spending her time in between school with her nan or younger cousins and family on both sides and she always had time for everyone who she knew, never having a bad word to say about anybody. A very kind and caring personality. We enjoyed lots of family occasions together, always seeing each other for special days like birthdays or Christmases. Happy memories, me and my family will forever treasure of Megan. From family friends, Leanne and Darren Owens. Age just 15, a loving daughter, sister, granddaughter, niece, cousin, student, and true friend to many. Please picture Megan, tall, slim, beautiful, with the most gorgeous hair and smile in the world. She was always dressed immaculate, leaving school each day as tidy as she had just walked in, her long, dark blonde hair swaying from her shoulders, looking as fresh as a daisy. She would come around the corner and give her mum and dad the warmest smile you could imagine. You could say Megan was lucky. Her mum and dad collected her every day from school. That's how Megan's life was. She was protected by her parents, not the usual teenager who would always be out of the house or sleeping over in friends, not one to have a thousand followers on social media, just private and protected. So that's Megan on the outside. Now picture a happy, oh so happy, warm, calm, kind, loving and considerate person who made everyone feel special, listened to and loved. Megan seemed to miss out the grumpy teenage years. She was just a delight. Megan will always hold a close place in our family's hearts. Megan was slightly older than our daughters and was a perfect role model. They truly looked up to her. That's easy to understand and probably due to her being so kind, you would never hear Megan talk ill of others, always looking on the bright side of people in life and really looking out for others. We can only look at our holidays as memories. They won't happen in the same way again. Megan always found it easy to swap between conversations from entertaining and sitting with the kids to sitting alongside her mum and dad and wider group and enjoying a good chat with them. Loving the outdoors and camping, fab on the jet ski, she didn't seem scared of anything. The times we have all laughed as families, sat sharing stories while sat in the hot tub, are all just memories now. I have to mention Christmas. The Hurley's house was the Christmas house. They made the best effort 
to make sure Megan and Bradley had everything they'd wished for in a house that was like a winter wonderland. I recall buying the 2016 Harrods Bowl for their tree. It was a tradition. Joanne collected them each year. This was the last one that was bought and the tree has not been seen since. Once we had been for an ice skating session on Christmas Eve, the family liked to be on their own. Joanne making sure everything was perfect for Christmas Day. Megan in her new PJs, as always, fresh as a daisy. That's the way the Hurleys were. Great company, but happiest when they were in their own little family bubble. They really didn't need anybody else. I was delighted our daughters had Megan in their lives. She was the daughter that you hoped your own daughters would turn into. If you knew the Hurley family before Megan's loss tore through them, you would have seen a perfect family, happy, healthy and together. Megan enjoyed her nights in, welcoming family and friends to the Hurley house as much as she enjoyed spending time with her friends. During our get-togethers, she was always found sitting very close to her mum, Joanne, or dad, Mike. It was beautiful to watch Megan's relationship with her brother Bradley. It was like they had some sort of secret language or code, sitting together, laughing hysterically at things that no one else understood. They truly got each other. Megan and the girls would also spend time upstairs, trying out some form of new dance. You could hear them screaming, laughing throughout the house. The impact of losing Megan has had a significant impact on her family and friends. I can only speak of the impact on my own family. Overnight, our daughter's innocence and sense of security was snatched from them. Aged eight and 13 at the time, to hear of such a horrific way in which they lost Megan, their role model, then seeing the impact upon Bradley, Auntie Jo and Uncle Mike left them devastated, scared and confused. As parents ourselves, what hurts is the sense of wonder that you have for Megan. It's cruel to think our eldest daughter is now older than Megan when she was taken, and that's hard. The fact that we could not celebrate special occasions with Megan, such as her GCSE results, prom, 16th and 18th birthday, not having a chance to see Megan's dreams come to life. Where would she travel? Would she become a physiotherapist? Would she marry, become a mum? These are things I picture every day and it breaks your heart so I have no idea how Joanne and Mike cope with this. It's a life of heartache. Amongst the sadness, I hope that you take away that Megan was beautiful and carefree inside and out. Her family and friends will be heartbroken and devastated forever. But her legacy should be that she loved life and lived it with the biggest smile. from family friend, Denise. The first time I met Megan, she was approximately two weeks old. The first thing I noticed about her was how calm, placid and serene she was for such a young child. This set out the foundation for Megan for her 15 years. Calm, placid and serene. From such at a young age, Megan was very popular with her friends, peers and teachers. This was not only in primary and secondary school, but also in her personal life too. This is such a rare quality for a young person to have an influence on not only children, but adults too. Wherever she went, whatever room she walked into, you would know Megan was there. She did not have to speak any words to inform you of her presence. Her smile and aura did that for you. 
she had the most beautiful smile ever. She never asked for attention. She didn't have to. She naturally sought it without trying. Everything about her was so natural. Megan was not only beautiful on the outside, but on the inside too. I feel there are not enough words in the whole wide world that can describe and explain the qualities and attributes of Megan. One thing that always stands out for me with Megan is how she would be the voice for the underdog, always looking on the other side of the coin for the person and never judging them. She disliked anyone being bullied, spoken to wrongly, or getting a disservice. Anything that had a negative vibe was not welcome to Megan. She was such a positive young person. Megan was so studious. She loved learning. She was very bright, very intelligent. She would share her nuggets of wisdom that she had learned in school, and she would blow me away with the facts that she knew. Megan had such a love for animals. She loved them and they loved her. Children gravitated towards her. Her young cousins and family friends, young children loved her. They would gaze up at her adoringly and follow her whenever they were in her company. <coughs> they loved and idolized her and she loved them. Megan was so family orientated. Her family were her world. She absolutely loved, adored, and idolized, idolized her mum, dad, and brother Brad. I was always in awe of her relationship with her brother Brad. To see them, they looked like best friends. They were always laughing and giggling about something when they were together. Megan was a brilliant athlete. You name it, and she could do it, or compete in it. There was nothing she couldn't do. She was so energetic and lively, she had bundles of energy. If she wasn't doing sport, she was dancing. She was so creative in making dances up with her friends. To me, Megan was the perfect daughter, perfect sister, perfect cousin, perfect niece, perfect friend, perfect peer, perfect student, perfect confidant, perfect advocate. Everything about her was just that, perfect. She was, is and always will be in my mind and heart our very own Queen of Hearts. From family friend, Gay Anderson. Megan was a lovely young girl with the most beautiful smile in nature, which could only be described as a delight to see in a teenage girl, just heading towards the end of her last year in senior school. Megan was a very popular girl in school with many friends. Our son Charlie was in Megan's class at school and they had a special relationship, having grown up together. Megan was very special to Charlie and he truly misses her in his last months of school and always will. Megan was a music fan and loved attending concerts of all different genres. And we will especially remember our yearly girls outing to Radio City show, which she and our daughters all enjoyed as a special occasion. We can value our special holidays and weekends away as treasured memories, as they will never be the same again. Megan was a delight to be around and got along with all adults and children. Megan had a fantastic relationship with her family always shopping with her mum, spending hours talking to Brad. I'm sure they had a secret language, knocking her dad's beer over. One thing you can be sure of is Megan was greatly loved by her family and she greatly loved them. Losing Megan has had an enormous impact on her family and our family as our own children were 15 and 17 at the time. And this has devastated their lives and ours forever.
with losing such a lovely cousin and friend, Gay and Steve Anderson. From Megan's primary school teacher, Mrs. Coleman. Megan began her life at Halewood C of E school as a little girl with bouncy blonde curls, an infectious smile, and eyes that sparkled with adventure. All through her primary school years, she was loved by all who met her. She was kind, thoughtful, caring, and a friend to everyone. No matter what kind of day it was, how tricky the work was, or how she was feeling, Megan was always smiling, always laughing, and encouraging those around her to do the same. She never had a cross or unkind word to say. Megan was a quiet girl who just got on with things, and as she grew, so did her confidence. We were so proud when she stepped into her role so well in our end of year play. When Megan left our school in year six, no longer a little girl, but still with bouncy blonde curls, an infectious smile, and eyes that sparkled with adventure, she was excited and nervous for what secondary school would bring. But she knew with her friends around her, she would settle in quickly. All those who had the pleasure to meet Megan will always remember the warmth of her eyes and her smile. A bubbly young teenager, taken too young, she will forever be in our hearts. From Megan's friend, Amy Clark. My friend Megan was a beautiful, funny, caring and kind person to be around. Every time we were together, we would always be laughing and smiling for hours on end. I always remember her smile was so contagious, she would always be making jokes and making everyone laugh. Megan has always been a part of my life from a very young age. We grew up together as we were friends from a very young age. We share so many memories together from both in primary school, where we spent our days playing on the school playground, to outside of school, when we would meet up and spend time together, laughing and talking for hours on end. One of my favorite memories with Megan was during one of my Halloween parties I had when we were younger. Megan came dressed as a giant orange pumpkin, her favorite color, of course, and her hair was so curly. Every time I look back on the pictures, it makes me smile as I remember the happy times we spent together. Megan's hair was one of my favorite things about her. It was so curly and long, and I always used to want my hair to be like that. So I would always ask my mum to braid it. So when I took it out in the morning, it would be curly like Meg's. So it could be the same as hers for school. I remember I would sit on FaceTime with her for hours when we discovered we could do that. She even showed me how to make my hair curly whilst I tried to copy her over FaceTime. I used to go around to Meg's house where we would sit and play with her rabbit fudge and her cat Jerry. Megan always loved animals. She would always talk about them and be so gentle with them. We would always go and see the horses that were on the field close to her house. Another one of my favorite memories was when Megan used to come round to my house. My mum would let us borrow all of her shoes and clothes and we would walk along the hallway pretending we were in a fashion show. We felt so grown up in our heels. <clears throat> Me and Megan had a day out with my mum and dad where we went to visit a shop that had a huge field with gigantic statues of different animals. Me and Meg were so amazed, asking my mum to take pictures of us in front of them. They were some of my favorite pictures of us because we looked so excited and happy. Me and Megan shared so many memories and little moments that I often look back on. I am so glad I have these memories and pictures to remind me of the good times we spent together. From Megan's friend, Neve Armstrong. 
In primary school, Megan was very shy, but once you became friends with her, you would see how bubbly and funny she could be. She was a good friend to so many people, and I know a lot of people will, will agree with me when I say something will always be missing. I'm grateful to remember my last moments I spent with Megan. She was never not smiling and had the most contagious laugh. My life with Megan was nothing but happy and I can't help but smile when I think of our friendship. From Megan's friend, Anna Mason. Megan was the most amazing friend anyone could ask for. She was kind, reliable, and always brought a smile to your face. Megan and I first met when we were three years old at nursery. I remember us singing together, playing house and school. Our friend Amy had a Halloween party and Meg came dressed as a big orange pumpkin costume. In primary school, we used to make bird's nests out of cut grass on the field. I remember making one with Meg and collecting daisies to decorate it. We used to play tag on the tires. Meg was really fast and would always catch me. The main thing I remember is that when we played, we never stopped laughing and smiling when we were with Meg. Charlotte Harris described Megan as a great friend and a wonderful person with a smile that was contagious. I feel so grateful to have been her friend and grown up with her. Our happy memories will live with me forever. In year six, we went on a class trip to Alton Towers. Our last ride was the pirate ships that had water guns and we had a water fight. In the photo displayed on the screen, you can see Meg and I completely soaked, but smiling. Megan's mum, Jo, helped organise our school prom and made us all delicious food. Meg looked beautiful wearing an orange dress with a matching flower headband and her gorgeous curly hair. We had pictures taken at school before getting into the limo. We sang and danced in the limo, taking it in turns to shout out of the windows and wave at people. Meg and I went to different secondary schools, but still kept in touch. We all used to go to the park together and play on the big basket swing. Oliver Hengler told me about a time she went to the park with Meg. Megan was the most caring friend and always knew how to make me smile. My favourite memory was when we spent hours sat on the swing at the park, just talking and catching up. And we never stopped laughing, even when it rained and we had to run home. Isabel Austin described Megan as a kind, bubbly friend who always put a smile on your face. My favourite memory with Megan is when we danced and sang along together to the music at parties. Megan always lit up the room. Megan loved music and going to concerts. Rebecca Murphy remembered when she saw Meg at a concert. <coughs> Meg had gone with some of her friends and I'd gone with some of mine. When we saw each other, we burst out laughing because we were both wearing the same top. We couldn't believe it. Out of all the tops Meg and I wore, we wore the same one to the same place. Her smile and laugh from that day will always stay with me. Two days before the attack, we were at Neve's 15th birthday party together. We were singing, dancing and laughing on the bouncy castle. We laughed the whole night, especially when I was standing on my tiptoes, trying to be as tall as Meg and our other friends in the picture. We all played on the bouncy castle, but we were all a bit big for it. If too many of us stood in the middle, it collapsed and we all fell on top of each other, which made us laugh even more. Half term was next week and we said we would choose a day to go out for breakfast, but Meg was taken from us before we got chance to do this. Later, we all said our goodbyes to Meg and gave, and she gave me a big hug. I love and miss her so much, 
and will cherish our memories forever. From Megan's friend, Molly Neal. I have known Megan for most of my life and I am lucky to call her one of my kindest of friends and we have grown up together and shared so many fun and loving memories. Megan was a really cheerful girl who was always smiling and laughing. We shared so many fun times like seeing our favorite people in concert and had the, be the best sleepovers. These memories will always be in my heart and I will never forget Megan. From Megan's secondary school principal, Gary Evans. Megan started at Halewood Academy the same day as I did. For that reason, Megan's year group was always a special group for me. My main memory of Megan is her smile. Over time, it became a habit to chat to Megan and her group of friends during break or lunchtime. They tended to sit at the same table each day. They were a lovely group of students, and I remember how Megan and her friends would humour me by listening to my probable awful jokes. Whenever I saw Megan around school, she would always say hi, and you would see that smile. Megan worked really hard at school and seemed to enjoy her time in school. I can recall she was doing particularly well in geography and Spanish. I have absolutely no doubt that Megan was going to enjoy success in her GCSEs and beyond. However, Megan had a real sense of fun. She loved her friends so much. As a head teacher, you become very protective of the students you serve. The atrocity in Manchester had a huge impact on everyone in school and it really affected me. Megan's friends were extraordinary in how they dealt with their grief. Within days, they were working with me and other staff to organise fundraising events, and then they presented the idea of a memorial garden. I am proud to say that this is now at the heart of the school. It is a place where students and staff can sit in quiet and reflect. Each time I am there, I think of all the work the students and staff put into this, and then I see Megan's pin design, created by her brother Bradley, and I smile. I just wish I could see Megan smile back. From Megan's year group progress leader, Carol Thomas. Megan was a very intelligent and hardworking young lady. She had a positive attitude towards learning and would put 100% into everything, never giving up. Megan was a very academic, academic student and had high expectations. She was a strong person through and through, with a strong character, personality, and presence. Megan was well liked by all staff and students. She was honest, reliable, and valued by her friends. As young as she was, Megan was always the peacemaker and the voice of reason. She had a zest for life, and her smile would brighten up your day. from Megan's assistant progress leader, Jackie Anderson. Megan settled in at the academy very well with a close friendship group around her. Megan was respected by all. She would light up any room she was in with her huge cheeky smile. <coughs> Megan was always eager to help others and she spread the love and laughter wherever she went. Megan left an impact on all of us and touched the lives of so many in her short time with us. Megan leaves us smiling through our tears. She was joy personified. From Megan's tutor, Sarah Bly. Megan had an absolutely infectious smile and could always be relied upon to bring an air of calm to even the most hectic mornings. She was always there to support her friends and gave her time to them unconditionally. She was hardworking and dedicated to her <coughs> studies, showing her determination to succeed whilst also sharing her passions and enjoying a good chat. 
Megan showed a love of life and a life filled with huge potential, which we can only hope to do justice in her memory. From Megan's boyfriend, Kieran Hindley. Megan was one of a kind. She was gorgeous and kind to everyone she met. She would make you happy in an instant, no matter what mood you was in, just by showing you her beautiful smile. Meg made my life a lot better in the time that we were together, and I'll cherish the memories I had with her for the rest of my life. I'll always love her, and I wish I could hear her laugh one last time. Love you, Meg. Kieran. From Megan's friend, Jasmine Shacklock. Megan was the kindest, most inspiring person I ever got the chance of being friends with. She would bring light into any room that she was in, always laughing and happy wherever she went. My favorite memory with Megan would be our desperate housewives catch-ups, as we called them. We'd watch episode after episode with each other nearly every day always ending up with us screaming and dancing around her room somehow. We would always find fun in doing the most stupidest things with each other, from sneaking into children's play areas in Jelly Bean, to making up silly dances in her kitchen and annoying our school teachers because we would never stop talking and laughing at the slightest of things. I miss our pool days in Hannah's garden, blasting music as if it was only us around and even our film days, when we would try and watch a scary film but would never get more than 10 minutes into it. She pushed me and everyone around her to do better. She would see the good in anyone and bring it out. I will always remember Megan as who she was, a bubble of life, still inspiring people to do good even now. from Megan's friend, Hannah Kelly. Three years ago, life changed drastically. The tragic event that took place left my heart broken and the adjustment to life a painful struggle. The day I met Megan was the first day of secondary school. We were both nervous and that's what brought us close together as she understood what was going on. From that day forward, we were inseparable. Megan was a warm-hearted person that would go out of her way to do anything for anyone. She was the most cheerful person I've ever met and would never have a bad word to say. She was honestly a ray of sunshine that I'll never forget. My greatest memory with Megan began in year seven when we went to Chester Zoo with the school. We, ran, we ran around joking and laughing. Later that evening, Megan came back to my house, meeting the rest of my family. We blasted the music, singing and dancing around. I remember the time I went away with Megan and her family to their caravan. And all we did was laugh and amuse ourselves. And I remember the day we went down to the beach. We were ringing my family, telling them they could watch us on the camera. So we jumped around and acted silly until they noticed. I miss having Megan around on all occasions we had planned and everything we dreamed about has all had to change. I will never forget Megan. You were the best friend I always wished for and forever be in my heart and my thoughts. From Megan's friend, Faye Clifton. I met Megan when we started secondary school and I was so lucky to have. I was nervous to start and make new friends, but Meg was definitely one of the girls who accepted everyone for who they were, and she helped me find my feet in school by just being herself. Meg was always half a glass full. She saw the bright side in every situation. While we would all moan about how tired we were or how early it was, Meg was just happy to spend the whole day with her friends. 
Me and Megan both took PE together and laughed every lesson. Maybe because she did something silly or that I just didn't get what was going on, but we always had a laugh, that's for sure. There was never a dull moment. From school to our parties, we would sing and dance and have a laugh because that's what Megan was all about. I'm so privileged to have met Meg and shared so many smiles and giggles to be able to remember her to be the beautiful girl she was, inside and out. Even though I didn't know her as long as some of the others, I felt like I had known her for a lifetime, and I am so grateful. Megan was the most lovely person I have met, and I will forever miss her and always remember her. From Megan's friend, Ashley Falls. When I was asked to write this, I wasn't sure what to say. I wasn't sure how to put into words just how special Megan was to me and how much she'd had an impact on my life. When we met in school, we had most lessons together and then we picked the same GCSE choices. Our whole school day was filled with laughs, jokes and amazing memories. Although school is hard, it was most definitely made easier with friends around me and Megan was a big part of this. Megan was someone who could make you feel better and just a smile. She would put other people's needs over her own and always treated people with kindness. She was there for me if I needed her and stood by me as my friend. We shared amazing memories together and amazing moments, our favorite being sleepovers. Staying up watching movies only to be interrupted by the endless chatter that never got boring. These memories I will never forget. I will always remember how much she meant to me. I always wear her pin and orange ribbon, her favorite color, and I wear it to show my support and stand for Megan as I am so proud to do. Megan was a part of me. She has helped me and made me who I am today and continues to affect my life through the memories of her that she made me a better version of myself and always saw the best in people, which is one of the many parts that made her so special, not just to me, but to everyone. Megan was a one of a kind. I don't think I will ever have a friendship like that with anyone, she will always be in my mind and heart and I will never forget her and how good she could make <coughs> someone feel. She made so many people happy and I am really fortunate to have known such an amazing person and friend in my life like Megan. From Megan's friend, Ellie Moss. Me and Megan were in the same year at school. I first met her at her friend's birthday party in year seven. I'd only known her properly for a few hours, but the way she laughed and joked with me, you think we'd been friends for years. She was like that with everyone she met, treating them so kindly and welcoming. Having Megan as a friend meant you always had someone to talk to and joke with. She was always so positive and uplifting. Her personality lit up every room. My favorite memory with Megan is when we went to the concert with all of our friends. We danced, sing, laughed all night, even though, even through the breaks, she wouldn't let us sit down. I like to remember this moment particularly because not only is it filled with happiness, but she's doing something that she loved. Trying to put into words on a piece of paper how amazing someone like Megan truly is, is extremely difficult. But I hope I have done Megan and her family proud. Anybody who knew Megan or had the honor of calling her a friend will know she lived her life to the fullest, lovingly, laughing and smiling, 
that beautiful smile. And that's how she will be remembered forever. From Bradley's closest friend, Rosie Ligood. I knew <coughs> Megan for all of her life. I can even remember Joanne being pregnant with her. When I was in year six, I was Megan's reception monitor. She was so cute and her blonde curls, and I used to love swinging her around and playing with her and her friends. Megan would appear quite shy, but she was very chatty as a child when she knew you. She would tell the longest stories about something that had happened at school and when we would have dinner or breakfast together and she would laugh heartily at them. At the time, I probably didn't appreciate the stories as much, but I think back to them now often and find myself laughing as much as she would. As we got older, Megan turned from Bradley's baby sister to someone I was dying to be friends with. It was no longer her wanting our attention, it would be us wanting hers. It was no, I used to love going into her room and looking at all her girly stuff and asking her questions about her friends and boys. I would often ask her about school, hoping she'd loved history as much as I did. Unfortunately for me, she took after her brother and liked photography instead. Once she started towering over me, I realized she was growing up so fast, which I liked because it meant she was closer to being able to come out with us. I think about how much I used to pester her all the time. At Bradley's 18th, I spent a lot of time talking to her and her friends, who were mostly laughing at how drunk I was. At some point, I started calling her Megatron. I would see her and shout Megatron, and she would smile. I would follow this up with stay skinny, and she, or, she would always laugh. This may sound awful with hindsight, but I liked making her laugh. She had the same laugh as Mike. When I see Mike laugh now, it reminds me of her. I loved it when Bradley would tell me Megan liked something I wore or if she would ask me what makeup I was wearing. It made me feel like she was the little sister I never had. Our group chat was often filled with the fine details of Megan's life, whether it was what she was wearing to a party or laughing at a video of her and Bradley together. I have always liked things that were too young for me or things which were too feminine for Bradley. So I used to love talking to Megan about TV series and films that I was way too old to be watching. Growing up with the Hurleys was a lot of fun. The meals together, camping trips and family parties are all memories which I treasure. It was an honour to have known Megan. She was a lot of fun. I miss pestering her to be my friend. I miss making her laugh. I miss the videos of her and Brad. I miss talking about what she was doing or what she would wear. I miss poking around her room and telling her I had something she had. I miss the mealtime stories in the holidays. Mostly, I miss knowing Megan as an adult, celebrating her results, seeing her at prom, having her first drink and talking about all the things she would be getting up to as an 18 year old. If I could see her now, I'd still shout Megatron at her and tell her to stay skinny, just to make her laugh again. From Megan's brother, Bradley. There aren't enough hours in the day or words in the dictionary for me to paint an accurate picture of my life with Megan. I cannot make you feel the joy of knowing Megan or the pain of losing her. I can't share every memory I have, and even if I did, you still couldn't understand because our relationship was personal, unique, and individual to us. But I hope this short piece gives just a small insight into Meg's life and how much she meant to me. Megan was my sister. She was born when I was only six. 
I remember counting down to her birth with my family. I remember our house being extended to accommodate our new arrival. But once Megan was born, I suppose we didn't have much in common. Being young and selfish, the truth is, I probably didn't appreciate having her around for the first few years of her life. But as we grew older together, Megan and I developed a new bond. One like I'd never experienced before, the brother and sister bond. Some of my earliest memories are playing in the garden, chasing each other, playing hide and seek, and me developing the nickname Moo Moo for her. Nicknames would go on to become a running theme in our family. Megan Doodles, Mantan, Megatron, and Cuddlefish would go on to become just a few of Megan's part-time names for different phases of her life. Though the nicknames came and went, the relationship continued strong, of course. The age gap had its moments. I would often become the boring older brother who didn't want to play as much as his energetic little sister. And she would become the person who was banned from my bedroom. But we would always end up being best of friends again. And I would host a bro and sis night where, we'd, where we would pick a movie and watch it in my room with goodies dedicating the night to some quality time together. We would love these nights. We shared everything in our life, schools, home, holidays, family and experiences. And though the six year age gap followed us, it seemed only to shrink as we got older. That's when our relationship flourished the most. In 2008, our parents opened their own business. And though during the early years, Meg and I would love to be at the shop, messing around and getting in the way, we eventually decided to start staying at home to avoid the early mornings and lack of Wi-Fi. So during the weekend and on school holidays, it was just us two for most of the day with the house to ourselves, and we loved it. <coughs> After splitting the house chores, we would get on the couch and order a breakfast delivery from our parents' cafe and enjoy chilling together. It was around this time that we started to develop similar interests and we got to know each other's personalities a bit more. I always remember this one day when we discovered Keeping Up With The Kardashians on Sky and we binge watched the first series for the whole day. As they gained popularity, we maintained the stance that we were the first people who kept up with the Kardashians before it was cool to. This was just the beginning of our shared pop culture obsession. We eventually loved all the same movies, the same TV shows and the same celebrities, but most of all, the same music. Music became a running theme in our life and it was something we loved just as much as each other. Megan would ask me to download new music onto her <coughs> iTunes and for the most part, it was songs we shared a love for. Our iTunes were near identical. I would often wait for Meg to get home from school and eagerly run down the stairs with my speaker in my hand, excited to show her the latest song that was out that day. And she would just be as excited as me to hear them. We would look at each other and wait <coughs> for our reaction as to whether it was a hit or not. One of my favorite memories of Megan from May 2017 was doing just that to show her Katy Perry's latest single, Swish Swish. I didn't mention the song featured one of, her other, one of our other favorites, Nicki Minaj. We had seen Nicki Minaj in concert in 2015. And although this was our sixth concert together, it was our first time going alone. And we had the best night singing along to the songs we loved. Meg's eyes lit up with excitement when she first heard Nikki on the track, and I smile about it every time I hear that song. These are the memories that come into my head the most. They may seem trivial, but our shared passion for music is something that stands out for me so much. I feel like I'll never share an interest with anyone in the same way again. We discovered it together, experienced it together, and fell in love with it together.
We would set alarms for three in the morning to watch music video, videos premiere or performances from America debut. We had our own individual interests, but music was our thing that we did together. By this time, Megan was nearly the same height as me and full of confidence, growing into a woman before our eyes. If you didn't live with her, you could be forgiven for describing her as quiet. But in reality, she was just a chilled out girl. She didn't seem to have worries or anxieties and didn't often complain. Meg would roll her eyes at my problems and think I was being dramatic, which I usually was. And I admired her, la her laid back nature. We had grown up talks about the world schools, and about our lives. She was very mature, good at conversation, and could look at any situation from different perspectives to give her level-headed take, and you definitely wouldn't feel like you were speaking to a 15-year-old girl. Though I was the louder and the more dramatic of us both, we had an understanding and admiration for each other. People would often say, how she looked up to me and wanted to be like me. But really, I think we were just both happy to know each other and felt lucky to have a best friend within a sibling. Megan's sense of humour was unmatched and we could belly laugh for ages at the silliest things. Often at my expense because she was far too cool to ever be the butt of the joke. Her beaming smile and contagious laugh could lighten any mood. She was such a bright light. The six year age gap felt it had almost completely closed when we were both teenagers at the same time. Megan and I would share fashion advice, ask each other opinions on outfits and introduce one another to new things. And we were truly closer than ever. I would buy her makeup and clothes on special occasions, which she always appreciated because she trusted my judgment and I trusted hers. We would shop together, go to the cinema, go for meals and simply enjoy each other's company, all the while blasting our favorite albums in my car. We both got into our first romantic relationships within the same year and had so many new feelings and emotions to share and stories to relate about. It felt like becoming best friends all over again with someone you had known your whole life. This was the case up until our very last night together at the concert. We were sat in the Prime View bar instead of watching the support acts where we chatted, laughed and shared stories. Swish Swish by Katy Perry and Nicki Minaj played in the bar. Losing Megan at the time feels even more painful because of the stage we were at in our relationship. And it hurts to think how close we would have been today, what we would have been doing now, how different life would be. Though the loss of Megan is so hard to accept, I don't cry or get sad when I remember her, I smile. I think about how she would react in certain moments to certain songs to certain episodes of the Kardashians. I think of how many inside jokes we would have by now, what life struggles we would be facing and helping each other with, whether we'd been on our first night out together, where in the world we would have traveled, how amazing she would be. How lucky I am to have had the time I did. I suppose that's what people mean when they say someone is always with you. Love you always, sis. Final words from the Hurley family. Since the horrendous day in May 2017, our lives have been ruined forever. Our hearts have been shattered into a million pieces. The pain we feel day in day out, year upon year. 
Losing Megan has left an enormous and irreparable void in our lives. We miss you more than words can say, Megan. You will forever be our beautiful beauty queen. Lots of love, mum, dad, and Brad. Thank you, Mr Smith. And can I say thank you to Megan's mother and father and to relatives and friends for sharing with us those insights into the very full and happy life of their amazing girl. And also sharing with us the overwhelming grief they and others have suffered as a result of her untimely death. A recurring thought during a number of these tributes has been, what a waste of so much potential. Mr. Greeny. Sir, thank you very much. What we propose, subject to your view, is that we should take um, our lunch break at this stage and return with the next tribute at um, 1.40. Thank you.